Hi, I'm Lisa Niven Kelly, founder of Beach Education, and today I'm going to teach you how to make my Spiro pendant design. This is a class that I've traveled and taught for many years, and it's very popular and fun. And in my longer version of this class, we would start with a plain washer, and I would notch the outside in class using a hole punch plier, which takes some time and some practice. It's a little hard on your hands, but Good news, we've simplified it for you and we have had pre-notched washers made and manufactured just for us. So this speeds up the process of this pendant. It's really fun, really easy. I'm gonna show you how to do it now. Here's some of the tools you need for today's project. You need a chain nose and a bent chain nose. I use these two for opening and closing a jump ring. So if you happen to have two chain nose, that would be fine. A flush cutter, a nice pointy one, comes in handy. And if you need to add additional holes to your notched washer, you can use a hole punch plier for that. If you need to straighten your wire, you can use a nylon jaw plier for that. So these two tools are optional. Here are the materials you need for today's project. You need some notched washers, some Swarovski stones, jump rings, and wire. Now this wire is 28 gauge dead soft sterling round wire. The jump rings I like to use about 18 gauge. You can go between four and five millimeters, whatever size holds the weaves and the chain appropriately. If you want to oxidize your piece, which we'll talk about later, then you'll need some liver of sulfur solution and some pro polish pads and a little bowl to mix up your liver of sulfur bath. Another thing you're going to need is some clear nail polish, and let me tell you why. If you don't coat the back of the stone with the nail polish, it'll start to rub off. You see how this one has rubbed off on the tip? That's from rubbing against my chest. Rubbing against the skin will cause a coating to come off. So putting a nice thick layer, maybe two or three layers of nail polish there will help prevent that from happening. All right, first things first, we are gonna practice this weave and we're just gonna do it with string. So I'm holding in my hand a one inch notched washer. And I'm just holding a little tail of the string behind it. If you need to tape it, you can, but I'm just bracing it there under my left hand. And the string is coming from, starting from behind the washer. It's gonna start by coming through this notch right here, just to the side of the hole. I like starting there because it helps me anchor and know when I'm finished, because I'm gonna end there as well. So for practice purposes, how about we skip one, two, three, four, five, six notches and go in and out of the seventh. That's really the only time you're gonna count the notches. Now you're just gonna follow the path of the string and you'll see how it weaves up. So I'm coming over, I'm going in that notch and then I'm gonna come around the back and come up through the notch one over clockwise from where I began. I'm gonna come down and go through that notch one over clockwise from my bottom weave there. You see how this is happening? And that's how it's gonna shift every time, one over. Are you following me? All right, let's keep going here. So if you ever get lost, uh, it, let's say I was like, you know, fooling around, watching TV, and I looked up and I was like, ah, I'm lost. All you do is undo one weave and go, oh, okay, I was down there. Let me continue that and come around. Now you'll see that at one point, well, at this point, I'm putting one string in every notch. But now I've got well, one more two strings, watch this. This is my next guy right there, but do you see how there's two strings in that notch? That can start to confuse you a little bit, but know that it's coming up and use that now to your advantage to help show you where you're headed next. So I'm gonna come down and go in and out of that one. Now if I'm lost, I can see there are two strings coming in this notch, so I'm one over from there, making two in its next door neighbor, okay? This takes just a little bit of practice and you'll see how it's gonna all come together. So now I'm just gonna shift my hand because I'm having a hard time holding it. Coming around, can maybe go a little faster. When you're all done, which we're not, we got a little ways to go, You'll have two strings or wires eventually 
in every notch. And I'm holding some good tension here as I pull down. You're going to do the same thing in wire to make sure that everything lays down really nicely and isn't loose. If it's loose, it could jump out of the notch. Now I'm kind of getting caught up on the tail here. This is a little awkward, but I'm going to try to just pull the tail tight so it stays in its place and maybe anchor it with a finger up there. Make sure I'm in the right space here because I got a little distracted. Okay, my next spot's here. Now I'm starting to, well I have been for a little while, but notice I'm now doing two, two threads or wires eventually in each of the notches below. Now you know when you're done, when you go around to go in the next spot, which I think would be right there, but it already has two in it. So now I'm finished. And to make sure that everything is correct, just take a peek, look at every single notch, and make sure there are two threads in every one, and you're done. If you love the way this looks with the thread, go ahead and just tie it off in the back, cut it, I would maybe do like three knots on top of each other, and then add a little dab of glue. I've definitely made jewelry with the string. It looks really pretty. So now, let's go see how it feels weaving with wire. Let's go ahead and weave this up with wire. I'm holding in my right hand here some 28 gauge sterling silver dead soft wire that I've pre-oxidized in liver of sulfur and I've only done that so that you can easier see the contrast here of the wire against the washer. It'll make it easier for you to follow the flow of the weave. And I'm holding the back in my hand there just like before. Let's leave about a one inch tail. It's popping out of the spot there. And I'm weaving again on a one inch notched washer. So before when we were weaving with the thread, we skipped about seven notches and it left the thread kind of out on the edge here. Let me bring that in so you can see that. And that looks great. But for an even more intricate look, you can skip more notches and it's gonna just cross over the washer a little bit and look a, more, look a little more detailed. I just wanna caution you to not skip too few of notches like this or this because the, notch, the weaves will want to pull right out of the notches. So let's go deep enough that we can anchor them in nicely. So for this one, I'm not going to count, where before we counted seven. I'm just going to go by what I like. I'm just going to say, mm, that's a little shallow. Let's go for that. All right, and then remember, we're just following the previous wire to show ourselves where to weave next. Now as I'm pulling on the wire, pulling it around into its place, I am pulling quite a bit, giving it good tension so it's not all floppy. If it's floppy, it'll likely just pull right out of the notches. And by pulling on it like I'm doing here with my hand, like this, as I go, I'm actually straightening the wire as I do it as an added benefit. You want to make sure your wire has no kinks in it. Otherwise those kinks will show up in these weaves and they won't look as regular and as pretty. So now's the spot where I ha now have two wires in each notch, so I'm going to keep an eye on that. And you'll notice on the back, I'm kind of burying my tail. Just leave it. Just ignore your tail the best you can because we're going to fish it out later using our chain nose. It's going to continue on here with good tension and shifting so I can comfortably hold it. Do keep an eye on your tail though here. This is my tail spot and sometimes it gets really loose and pops out. So make sure that it's in its proper spot before you start weaving over it.
All right, so I've woven it all the way up, and I know that because I'm coming around and every notch has two wires in it, so there's nowhere for me to go. So I'm gonna flip it over, and to tie off the tail, I first need to find the tail. Oftentimes it's very obvious, it's just poking out somewhere, great. In this case, it's kind of hidden, which is great because I can show you how to find it. I believe that this is it, right? Mm, here, I'm just gonna guess and take a little tug on it a little bit. Let me look from a different angle. Oh, I see it. It's this guy here. So get in there with your chain nose or your bent chain nose so you can see the tail. Well, maybe you can't see on camera, but it's right there. This is the guy I gotta try to grab. Maybe I can push him. Mm. There we go. I will say that was more difficult than it usually is. Trust me, it's usually a little more visible. There we go, I just pulled it out with my chain nose. And now I've got the two tails. I'm gonna show you from the side. See these two? So I'm gonna let them cross over exactly like they are right now in sort of an X shape. I'm gonna hold that X in my hand and spin this piece. And let me explain why. This is gonna result in these two twisting together. You don't want one to coil around the other because a coil can slip right off. If they're twisted, they won't come undone. So form an X like that, hold it with your hand, and then we're gonna spin, and you'll see it start to twist up. See it's twisting there? I like to get about a quarter of an inch worth of twist and make sure it does twist just like that and not coil. So that looks good. Now I'm gonna trim that and kind of tuck it under and place it underneath some of the weaves. I'm just gonna cut with a flush cutter here, right there. And you can do this next step with a chain nose. You don't need a round nose because I'm not interested in getting a perfect loop. I'm just interested in hiding this tail. So I'm gonna grab it just like that, just grab the tip and curl it over. Just so I more have a hook now. Let me try to get that so you can see. You see that? I'm gonna curl it even more. And then I kind of pinch it in. I know it's hard to see with all those weaves there, but I'm pinching in that little curl. And then with the side of my plier, I just sort of burnish it down so that it goes level with the rest of the weaves. Now I'm feeling it to make sure it's tucked in there very well. I'm not, it's not catching on anything, so it's nice and tight. So let me pull in that other piece that's got the thread on it so you can see the difference now of skipping more weaves and skipping less, or skipping more notches rather and skipping less. Now that we've practiced weaving with string and with wire, I think you've got the weave down. So let's practice now with a stone. I've got a Swarovski stone here. And the one thing I wanna point out before we start weaving is you need to hold your stone on this washer in a way that keeps it from shifting up or down like that. If you hold it just like this with your thumb on the side, you're likely gonna push it to the side and not notice it until all your weaves are on and then you can't shift it back. So I just wanna point this out so you keep an eye on it. I like to sort of hold it more with my thumb on top to press it down to keep it centered rather than on the side. That might be a little hard for me to do on camera. It might be easier for me to hold it on the side, but I'm gonna keep an eye on it and try my best to keep it hold, held center, okay? So I've got my 28 gauge round wire again. This time I've opted for shiny instead of oxidized. And we're gonna start just like we've started both times with the wire and the string with about an inch in the back. And then we're gonna get going. So to decide how many notches to skip to start out, I just more hold it over and say, hmm, like that feels a little shallow. I'm not convinced that's gonna hold my stone without it popping out. And this is a little deep where the weaves are gonna basically cover the stone. 
So I want to keep it maybe about there. Mm, there. I like that. Okay. So now just like before, we're going to weave it around. Nice tight tension. Don't let my stone slip there. And don't let any kinks in the wire accidentally appear. Let me shift. Now when you shift your hand, just make sure after you're done shifting and you've braced it again, that you've got the stone in the right place. It's really not that much harder with a stone in there, but it really is that much prettier. Especially these great colors. So now I'm at the spot where I've got two weaves going in each notch. I'm ignoring my tail, but soon I'll pay attention to him because I see that he's moved out of place. So right here, see how he's popped out? Just make sure he's back down and maybe find him on the back and pull him nice and tight. Uh oh, okay, let's try that again. I'm gonna get a finger under there. There we go. No. Okay, got him this time. And we're gonna continue on. My wire's sneaking up on me again. There, that last weave kind of really bossed the tail into place. Almost done. Oh, did you see what just happened there? I skipped a notch. So I'm keeping it real. Instead of cutting and fixing it, I'm gonna let you see me fix it. I just undid it and brought it right back. And I could tell because it was looking a little spaced out in there. When you undo it, it helps to pull on the wire quite tight when you undo it, and then it, it doesn't leave such a tight kink. All right, how are we doing here? I think this is my last weave. Yep. So see how everything has two. I'm just looking. Now sometimes something happens like this. That is a weird wire that's just sticking straight across there. I'm gonna take my thumb and just push it over to the other ones. Now it looks a lot better. Okay, I'm ready to flip it and find my tail. There it is right here. So I can bring the wire over and tie it off right there, or if I didn't have enough length, I would pull it out like I did before to tie it off. But that looks mm, kind of short. So I'm just gonna wiggle the tail so I can see where it is, and I see it poking out there, and grab it with some chain nose. Pull it up. I like the bent chain nose for this. It kind of lets me get in at a different angle. That's better, that's a little more length. So let's now turn to the side where I will hold it in an X form, like that. Maybe a little more drastic. And hold them still and twist. Now you definitely could over twist here. We don't want that to happen. Just hold it enough until you feel the tension and twist it enough until you feel the right tension. You don't want it to snap. Trim. And then with my chain nose, I could use the bent chain nose too, but I've got these guys here. I'm just gonna grab that tip and roll it down. See how it's formed like a little hook there? I'm gonna grab that hook and tuck it under, squeeze it in if I need to a little bit, and then with the side of my chain nose, just press to burnish it down. 
So you could have used your chain nose also to fish out the tail and then use it for this part too. You really don't need bent chain nose and chain nose unless you're going to use them both to add your jump ring, which we are going to do next. To finish your pendant, you're going to need to add a jump ring to your beautiful piece here so you can hang it from a chain. And to, you, to do that, I am going to use a chain nose and a bent chain nose. I'm going to hold the jump ring in my pliers, rock it to the side, hold it just with one plier, and find the hole. There it is. And I sort of take the tip of the jump ring and use it to push down into the hole and push the weaves out of the way if they are in the way. Wait, now I lost it. Okay, there it is. There we go. And now I'm going to rock it back. Make sure it's nice and tight and level. All right, now it's ready to be hung from a chain. If you are tempted to polish this even further and throw it in your tumbler, do not do it. Trust me, I have tried, and it beats off the back of the stone, which is the finish that gives it this colored look. It's not such a pretty look if you beat that off. Um, and speaking of that, this point touches your skin, your chest, if this is a pendant, it kind of rubs against it, and it will rub off against your skin as well. So at this point, you want to take some thick, high-quality clear nail polish and put a couple of coats on here to protect it. You can, I usually do it at this point, but truth be told, you can do it before you even start wrapping the Rivoli. And you really just need to get it about you know, six or eight millimeters out from the tip there and just cover it so that you won't lose that color. The last thing I want to do here is just take a look at my weaves and see if they need any additional fixing. You saw in the last step how I kind of moved one with my thumb. I like to kind of do that all the way around and it gathers them. Not too much, but just a little bit to push them all into the same place just makes it a little more even. Oftentimes you'll weave this up and they'll come out perfect, but if they need a little bit of moving, then this is a good little trick to know. So in this guy, what I did is I made the whole piece and then I threw the whole piece in a bath of liver of sulfur. You can follow the instructions that come with that solution on how to do that. But you don't have to worry, it doesn't hurt the stone at all. I've tested all these stones in there. I wouldn't oxidize with like a silver black or black max hydrochloric acid based solution. Because I, I mean, I have it may work, but I haven't tested it before. To, to me, it seems like they might be a little too harsh. So I've stuck with liver of sulfur. And you can see the difference. This is the one that we made in class today. And here's one that I made of the exact same stone, the exact same notch washer, and the exact same wire. But I took the whole thing and put it in the liver of sulfur and it turned it all dark. You want to wait until it gets to that deep, deep gray. I want to polish that up for you now so you could see how this is going to look in comparison to leaving it shiny. I like to use a pro polish pad. It has a nice micro abrasive in it as well as a polishing compound. And see how just a couple swipes is already pulling it off there. Let me just come in and you don't have to be gentle with these pads, but at the same time, you don't want to be moving around your weaves. So see how it's pulling the oxidation off of the top and leaving it down in the recessed areas and it just shows the detail a little bit more and it's kind of an antiqued look. You can also bend these pads to get into certain spots if you needed to do it that way. And they make your hands all nice and dirty, but you're making jewelry here. Gotta get a little dirty. Okay, I just like to get the little edges of the notched washer. I might work on it a little bit more, but I just want to show you now the difference in the look. So same components, it's just one's been oxidized, so that's kind of fun. And again, you're going to be tempted to tumble this. Don't do it. Learn from my mistakes. 
The other option is to pre-oxidize your wire, which I've done before, because another interesting look is to work with a notched washer that's bright and not oxidized, but have the wire be dark. So in this case, I just took my little coil of 28 gauge that first looked like this, threw it in a liver of sulfur bath, waited for it to turn, then look like this, bring it out, rinse it, and make sure it's very, very dry before you start to work with it again. So let's just talk real quick about how to add a second hole. Okay, I'm gonna put another hole right there as if I was gonna hang a chain out this way. You wanna mark it first with a Sharpie. And I like to, let me mark it and then explain. I like to put it not below a notch, but a little bit to the side of a notch. I'm actually gonna move it over to the side a little bit when I punch it. This is just an approximate because I want it like kind of right underneath there where there's a little more bulk of metal. And that looks like it's really close to the edge, but it's actually okay. It's just the angle there. See that? So now I want to put my stone on and just double check to make sure I didn't put it too far in where I might, you know, end up covering it with the stone, but that'd be great. Okay. So now I'm going to come in with my hole punch plier. And I want to point out that I've got this little piece of cardstock stuck on here because oftentimes the stump here on the hole punch plier that holds the pin that actually punches through, if you squeeze really hard, it will mar it. You'll get a little circle around your hole, which is not very attractive. So that adds a little bit of cushion. So I'm going to come in with the hole punch plier. First, I'm going to lay it lightly on my dot. I'm going to let you see all the angles here. And what you want to keep in mind is that there's a slight angle, I don't know if you can see that, on the pin that punches through. And the side that touches the metal first is actually on a side. It's not dead center. So I want to line up the side of the tool on the side of my dot. If that sounds confusing, just take a look at all the angles and make sure it's at the right spot. So I especially want to look at this angle, make sure it's sitting on that bulk of metal and it's not too close to any notch, which it was. So I moved it a little and now I'm looking closer and I really want it right about there. Okay, so I'm going to hold the metal and punch. And to get it off, you want to wiggle and slide it off of the pin. Got my little bit of Sharpie there. So now I've got my two holes. Okay, I want to just tease and tempt you here with this piece. This one is the pendant that I have traveled and taught a lot. It's very popular, it's very fun, but it is a little tricky. So if you're feeling up for it, you can give it a try. We're not gonna complete one, but I'm gonna talk you through it. All it is is exactly what you've done so far, except after I tied off and everything, I started with a new wire and added a second layer. And I added that second layer by skipping less notches than the first time, and that's why it's closer out to the edge, where the first layer sits into the middle more, and this one closer out to the edge. You don't wanna do the opposite, otherwise the second layer will hide the first. So let me just talk you through it here. I'm gonna use this one that we talked about earlier that we just polished. And I'm gonna use this really sassy neon green wire just to show you. I'm not gonna use it to actually complete this. I'm not that crazy, but let's just toss it on there. So start like usual, holding this in the back. Just do everything like you've normally done. But now where you were putting one wire in, in every notch and eventually two, you're gonna start by to by putting three wires in every notch and eventually four. So it can get really confusing. So I would skip less, maybe go here. See how that's just to the side? I don't wanna go here and cover it, but maybe here. And again, I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but I just wanna sh get it started with this really sassy contrasting color to show you how to do it. Okay, so just go all the way around, use the same amount of wire, go all the way around until it's completed and you have four weaves in every single notch and then tie off the back. Good luck!